Imagine a Pokemon Legends game that's based on the Galar regions and it's called Pokemon Legends Eternatus. So if you don't know, the Galar region is Sword and Shield basically, just for anyone who might not know. And Eternatus was the Pokemon that is responsible for the Darkest Day, which was a very massive and destructive event. I think Eternatus is honestly a great Pokemon to base an entire Legends game around because I feel like his backstory and that Darkest Day can actually set up an amazing legend style game. Also guys, at 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away a $20 Nintendo eShop gift card. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is just subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment down below, and stay tuned for future videos. Just let me know that you wanna be in the giveaway so I know who to enter in. And we're getting close to 10,000. We only need about 500 more, which is amazing. I can't believe it. So thank you for everyone that subscribes. So there actually is a fan-made game that's apparently still in progress called Pokemon Legends The Darkest Day, which, you know, the title is not that great. Which, I don't know why they didn't just call it Legends Eternatus, I just feel like Legends The Darkest Day is, <laughs> is just not the greatest title. But anyways, it seems like a really cool game, and the pictures that they show have graphics that look like they're based around like the DS era of graphics, like, you know, black and white, or uh, Gen 4 and everything like that which is pretty cool. So it's like a legend style game in the old style Pokemon graphics, if that makes any sense. I'm not actually sure if it's like open world, but the map looks like how the DS maps would look. So maybe it's open world, but also with like the linear gameplay style, if that makes any sense. I'm not entirely sure, of course. There's not too much information. They last updated it in like April 2022. So it's actually been a while um, since we've had the most recent piece of information about the games. I'm not sure if they actually scrapped the game or if they're still making the game or still developing it. You know, with a fan-made game, I'm sure it takes a long time because you don't have a huge team like you do with a, you know, regular Pokemon game. So hopefully that game actually does come out. I think you could download like a file that has some of the game, but you can't play the full game because it's not out yet. Anyways, just thought that was cool to mention. That doesn't really have anything to do with the storyline that I'm gonna talk about, but I think a Legends Eternatus game would be really cool to start like right before the Darkest Day, maybe a few months or a few weeks. Not exactly sure about that, but just before the Darkest Day actually occurs. And of course, you're gonna start this game off just like a regular Pokemon game. You pick your starter. Also, let me know what starters you think should be in a Legends Eternatus game. I didn't pick any because I kind of wanted to hear what you guys have to say, so let me know what starters you think a Legends Eternatus game should have. And of course, you still upgrade your Pokemon, level them up, whatever, catch better Pokemon, go find the rare Pokemon, catch shinies and all that. All the normal Pokemon game stuff, of course. Um, and, but along the way, you find out your enemy that the person is, you know, the beginning of the game that you're... You know, you know, you battle against. Usually it's like a friendly fight, but this this time it starts off as a friendly fight. I don't have a name for this enemy, but let's just say his name is Tony. I don't know. I'm just going to come up with a random name. So Tony seems like a good guy. Tony, you know, he seems like a good fella to battle. Good friendly battles happening. But secretly, Tony has a dark side to him. So he knows about the darkest day coming because he is involved with Eternatus. Somehow he found Eternatus hiding down in a deep cave, but Eternatus is really weak. I've said Eternatus so many times, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I, So if I say Eternatus wrong, ignore it. I, I've said it so many times. But yeah, so Tony finds Eternatus down in a cave extremely weak, so Eternatus can't really do anything. Tony knows about the darkest day and that it's coming, so he wants to help Eternatus gain strength, but he doesn't want to tell anyone else because Tony wants the darkest day to happen. He is all for it. He wants the destruction of the region, and he just wants to help Eternatus get to a point where he can start the darkest day. In the game, you eventually find out about Tony's schemes, and you, of course, do anything you can to defeat him, but you're kind of like a spy almost. Like, you don't... He doesn't know that you know. Tony has no idea that you know his secrets, right? But you just try to gather some evidence and pieces of information over time, over the course of the game, to where eventually you find Tony's secret base where he has a bunch of people under mind control, and these people actually don't know that they are under mind control. They don't know where they are. They're just being controlled to be able to work for Eternatus and, you know, like help find resources and materials, whatever, to help give Eternatus more strength. So like I said, Eternatus is down in a cave and the base is like, you know, not not right above the cave where Eternatus is, but within the close vicinity, I guess I'd say. So eventually when Eternatus gets enough strength, he can start the darkest day. And of course, Tony eventually gets to the point where he gives enough stuff to Eternatus to have enough strength. And the darkest day is upon us. The darkest day is right around the corner. So then you finally defeat Tony. You battle him, you defeat him. 
then you find a switch in that base that turns off the mind control and all the minions gain control of themselves and they actually want to help you because none of these minions are bad people like they were not bad people they were stuck under mind control just for clarification like like they had no idea what, what they were doing and then they eventually help you get resources like they give you the resources that they were going to give Eternatus to level up your Pokemon. So then you eventually find Eternatus. They help you find Eternatus because they don't directly know where Eternatus is, but they know he's nearby because the only person that knows the specific location of Eternatus is Tony. Tony's the bad guy. But at this point, Tony's like done with, you know what I'm saying? Like he's been defeated. He can't do anything more to help Eternatus. But the thing is, Eternatus has all of his power. Eternatus is strong, right? He's about to start the darkest day. And so this part of the story, I don't exactly know where it should go. I have two different ways it could go. One way is, of course, the way that the lore is where he actually starts the darkest day and it actually does happen and it actually causes mass destruction. So you can have Eternatus do all of that and then later on in the story, you defeat Eternatus later after the destruction has already happened and then you just kind of help rebuild the region, I guess you could say. Or this could take place in an alternate Pokemon storyline where you actually defeat Eternatus right like when the darkest day is happening. Like, like he started the darkest day, but it hasn't caused like destruction yet. Maybe a little bit of destruction here and there, but like nothing major. All the cities and people are okay. Maybe just some landforms like mountains and other things in the area have been like destroyed and stuff but you defeat Eternatus while he is starting the darkest day and then you prevent the darkest day from ever happening but but that didn't actually happen like in the storyline because i'm pretty sure that Eternatus actually did cause the darkest day and that was something that happened in the galar region so i think you could go either way like i said if you went the other way where he didn't start the darkest day yet that would have to be an alternate storyline because it wouldn't just add up to the mainline pokemon game with you know sword and shield i guess but let me know what you guys think like which storyline would you prefer and what legendary pokemon do you think should help defeat eternatus because maybe there should be another legendary pokemon that comes into play at the very end of the game that helps you defeat eternatus like maybe you can battle alongside the legendary pokemon with your pokemon or maybe you could just battle like with the legendary pokemon as your own pokemon you know what i'm saying like you catch that legendary pokemon let me know what you guys think though i think a legends eternatus game would actually be really really cool i'm all for it i didn't like sword and shield that much but eternatus i believe is a cool enough pokemon with cool enough backstory and lore to actually make a legends game out of and sword and shield games even though i don't like them they've grown on me you know what i'm saying like they've definitely grown on me over the years also, what other Legends games would you want out there, guys? I mean, people make Legends games, like, fan concepts about, like, every single Legendary Pokemon, but I just hope we get another Legends game in the future, because it was such a fun game, massive success, you know, everyone loves Legends uh, RCS. I mean, I guess I should have said everyone. The only thing I would want to change with any future Legends games is a beginning storyline that just gets to the point. Like, the tutorial introduction to Legends RCS just took forever. It was like an hour long and it was just like the most basic stuff like i already know that this is my sort of pokemon you know what i'm saying anyways hope you guys enjoyed make sure to leave a like subscribe and make sure to enter the giveaway once again just like subscribe and comment down below and stay tuned for future videos so that i know you actually want to be in the giveaway and once i hit 10,000 subscribers i will announce that giveaway winner and we only need 500 more i'm super grateful for anyone that has subscribed i can't believe the channel has been growing this much and i hope you guys enjoy this video i'll see you guys in the next one peace